Berger and Austin, why is there a deadline to get a long-term deal done on franchise tag players? I addressed that last week. I don't know. It helps the teams because what it does is it takes away the ability of the player to get anything in exchange for utilizing his leverage. Hey, I'm going to hold out to the training camp. Okay, go ahead. We can't give you a long-term deal. Hey, I'm going to skip week one of the regular season. Well, we can't do anything about it now. We can't give you a long-term deal. It makes it harder for the player to have a real incentive to exert his leverage because he can't get the thing that he wants. All you can get is more money on the long-term deal on the, no, excuse me, more money on the one-year deal or some commitment that next year they won't tag you again. So it just doesn't make sense. Will you make, this is from Tyler Herger, a 2023 season bingo card? Everyone always says they didn't have that on the bingo card, but no one actually makes the bingo card hashtag content. You know, speaking of content, and I don't know if we can find a way to use this on PFT Live, but Matt Casey turned me on to the crossovergrid.com where you've got categories that intersect, whether it's a player who played on the same two or two different teams, different awards, different things, different accomplishments. And you fill out this nine person grid with names. That is addictive. That's the bingo card I want. I actually did. He showed, he showed it to me yesterday and I did it, filled out the nine squares. And I went back to see the next one and there wasn't a new one. So I just erased it and did it again with nine different players. It takes some thought. You really test your memory bank. It's, this is one situation where it's good to be old. The sweet spot of old, where you can still remember stuff. You're old enough that there's a lot that you're remembering, but you're young enough that you still remember all the stuff that you're remembering. So the perfect game for a 58-year-old who's been a fan of the NFL for 50 years now and counting. Lee Dale, if you could be the GM of any team at the minute, but you have to have Sims as your head coach, which... Which team would it be? First of all, I I don't want to be a GM. I have no desire to do it. I know Sims kind of does. He mentions it every once in a while. Um, I mean, look, I would want the best team. Great players. As a, as a coach told me recently, there's a chess match element to football only if you're not in a situation where one team is made up of pawns and the other team is all queens and rooks. So I would say the Chiefs, I would say that Sims could work with Mahomes and I could just kind of sit back and play the Brett Veach role and yeah, and you get a chance at getting a ring because the infrastructure is already in place. If you screw it all up, there's still a pretty damn good chance they're going to win the Super Bowl despite you screwing it up. David Mitchell wanted me to review the Brett Favre versus Mississippi welfare situation. I thought I did. Did I not do that? I think I did. I'm pretty sure I did. Dilip Rao, how does one communicate to someone whose back has never gone out the sheer pain, immobility, and horror, as well as shame, that such an event confers on the sufferer? I've got a, an issue where my sacroiliac joint goes out of alignment on me once every five to 10 years. And during that two week period where it's acting up, it is debilitating. It is frustrating. Everything you do hurts. Every way you move hurts. You can't get comfortable in bed. You think you find a comfortable position and you move a little bit and you're not comfortable. It really is horrendous. And it makes you feel instantly 30 years older. Mine acted up last year. The first time I went back to Connecticut during the regular season, Matt Casey had people over at his house on a Saturday night. And while we were there, we were talking about back issues, back problems. Somebody mentioned somebody had a back problem. And I said, yeah, I've got this thing. And you know, I've been knock on wood. It hasn't bothered me in a long time. The next morning I was sitting on a chair at the hotel doing some work, copy paste, snarky comment. And I moved, I'm not going to try to simulate it because I don't want it to happen again. I moved a certain way. I just shifted in the chair and I felt something grab. 
and I was done. And it like for the rest of that day, it was kind of there. By Monday morning, it was horrible. And I walked through the airport with my my two bags, carry on, carry on, computer bag, and my bag with my one day of clothes, other than what I'm wearing. And I mean, it was it wasn't real heavy, but it felt like I was carrying around like seven bowling balls. And LaGuardia now, good news, it's no longer a third world country. Bad news, you got to walk. So I'm walking and I'm like, I, like I'd like i have to stop and just kind of rest and regather myself and then pick up and walk some more. So that was, and I went to physical therapy four or five times during that window. And then it just finally goes away. But it's horrible while it happens. And there's all sorts of different back issues. But for me, it's that sacroiliac joint. And I found out because I did, when I got my physical, a body composition analysis where you get your fat percentage from 19.1%, I think, which actually is pretty damn good. It sounds like a lot, but it's actually pretty good. But it's it's a series of x-rays, low, low dose x-rays that go top to bottom to figure out, you know, what percent is this? What percent is that? What percent is just pure bullshit? Uh, yeah. um, but my spine's, I got a little uh, scoliosis. My spine's a little, its it would be this way. So that kind of gives me, like, I feel like sometimes I want to do this. Like I'm just a little crooked this way and other ways. I'm a little crooked this way. And I think it, it does something with that SI joint. So well, how did we even get off on that topic? I don't know. All right. Uh Drew Porter, do you think Alvin Kamara will serve a suspension this year? Now that he has pleaded no contest to misdemeanor breach of the peace charges or something like that, but still at the core is an allegation of assault. The NFL has been monitoring the situation. The NFL moves forward with something, proposes a punishment. Judge Sue L. Robinson decides the case. The NFL has jurisdiction over the appeal. I think that they could get all this done before week one. And my guess, I, I mean, I, I hate to make a guess for something like this, but my guess is he's going to get a two-game suspension. That's my guess. So we'll see. I don't have any information to base that on. The other thing they could do in theory, because we heard a lot about Deshaun Watson and the league discussing a potential settlement, they could work out a deal where it doesn't go to the formal process. But I think it's going to be, my, if I had to guess, and I am guessing, I'm choosing to guess, I don't have to, but I'll do it anyway, two games for Alvin Kamara. GB Soccer 6, do top NFL players see the Messi deal and get jealous and will try to push for it? I mean, Messi's getting like 50 million a year. I, I've been making the argument that the best players in the NFL, the most exciting players, the most eventful and impactful players, the quarterbacks, the franchise quarterbacks, the best of the best, and we know who they are. When the scheduling process is actually influenced by where those guys play and influenced by retirement and unretirement, like it did last year for the league when Tom Brady retired and then came back to the Buccaneers or Aaron Rodgers, where is he going to go? That affects the scheduling. That affects which games we're going to put in the big spots. There's a value to the sport that goes above and beyond the salary cap. It goes above and beyond the structure that's in place for teams to pay players. And look, we already see the NFL do it with the thing they call performance-based pay, where you have a guy who comes in as a low-round draft pick and plays a lot. They've got a formula that gives him extra money. And sometimes he makes more money from that, that pot than what his salary would be. I just think that there should be a mechanism in place for all owners collectively, the league collectively, to set aside money that goes to the franchise quarterbacks. Whether it's based on how many games they play in a given year, whether it's based on the ratings for those games, wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that make sense? Isn't that a fair way to do it? Now I know you know Dak Prescott's going to get a disproportionate amount because he plays for the Cowboys, but I, I just feel like the value that the great quarterbacks have to the game requires them to get more money from the game, not from their team, but from the game. And they've created this beautifully perfect system from the team's perspective of a salary cap that keeps a Patrick Mahomes 
I mean, really, what is if, if the commissioner is making 60, 65, 70 million a year, what's Patrick Mahomes worth to the game? What's his value? 80 million a year, 90 million a year, 100 million a year. So it'll never happen because the, the league has to want to do it. The union has to want to fight for it. And as long as all players are in the same bargaining unit. Now, if there was ever branches where you've got the quarterbacks in their own unit, the running backs in their own unit, we've argued in the past, the running backs should have their own unit. Hell, the quarterback should have their own unit because they're subsidizing everybody else. That's what they're doing. The great quarterbacks of the NFL are subsidizing the rest of the league, the rest of their teammates, the rest of the sport, because people are tuning in to see the best of the best and the best of the best aren't getting the money that they deserve. All right. Uh, somebody wants to know when PFT Live is coming back. At least the question isn't why uh, are you no longer on Sky Sports? I really do think they're just messing with us now when they ask that question. PFT Live returns next Monday, 7 a.m. Eastern. I gotta get gotta gotta get up early again. Just when I get used to not getting up early, I gotta get up early again. I'm still up. I'm still up at the same time every day. Let's see here. Juicy Fruit Zero. With the conversation you had about Justin Jefferson on Friday, and we were asked on Friday whether or not the Vikings would use Justin Jefferson as part of a trade package that would be utilized to get a Caleb Williams, get their franchise quarterback. And, you know, my first reaction is, eh, no, you don't want to do that. You got Justin Jefferson. You don't want to get rid of Justin Jefferson, but a franchise quarterback, a guy that's going to be your 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 main go-to straw that stirs the drink for 10, 15 years. There's some value there, I guess. I don't like it, but I understand it. So with that conversation, do you think there was a thought, even just a tiny one, the drafting of Jordan Addison as a lower replacement for JJ. So if Jordan Addison shows anything, JJ can be used to trade for a franchise quarterback they're wanting. And oh, by the way, Addison played with Caleb Williams at USC last year. So maybe that's what they're thinking about. I don't know. Ghost of PFT comment section. What do you think a successful season for Jordan Love and the Packers looks like? Do you think it's predominantly tied to wins, stats, or flashes of good, great? Is that good enough for Brian Gutekunst? I, I think that I think getting to the playoffs would be successful. And I think I, I'm not ready to take my hand off the checker, but I think they will. I'm sliding the checker there toward Packers make the playoffs, and I'm holding my finger on it until right before the start of the regular season when we make our official picks. But I think they're going to be good enough to get to the playoffs. And I think that that's a, it's a good pass fail for the first year. Now, if you come close to making it, maybe that's kind of pass. Maybe it's incomplete and we kick it to next year. But if they get to the playoffs this year, that's a successful season. Even in a watered down division, in a watered down conference, if the Packers can get to the playoffs, that's a successful first year for Jordan Love. All right, we're done. We'll do it again tomorrow. We got four more of these left before PFT Live returns next Monday. We'll have constant updates around the clock at profootballtalk.com. Thanks, as always, for some of your time. We'll see you back here again on Tuesday. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.